the moment you've all been waiting for, whether you knew it or not, James and I, James, big smiles, there he is. We're gonna show you how to design anyway. I already built it, so I can't show you how to build it, but we're gonna show you how we built our own uh, keg washing setup about two, two and a half years ago, and it's been working out really, really well for us. I'm gonna give you the nuts and bolts of how it works and um, how we're gonna, we're gonna use it. So you'll be, you'll be able to see that. So first, a quick overview of the manifold I built, and you can make this, I did some TIG welding and stuff in here, which you do not have to do. You can, as you can see, you can pretty much thread this whole thing together. Stainless steel, uh, 304 stainless steel, which is cheaper than 316. So you can, um, make this thing on your own. Uh, parts are not super expensive if you can find them on like eBay or Amazon. And so basically what we got here is, uh, this is a manifold. So any valve that's open is gonna be communicating with the manifold. Uh, meaning, if I have water going into it, anything that I do in there is gonna be dealing with water. If I open my CO2 gas line here, it's gonna be dealing with CO2. So um, I'll give you a rundown of like each individual part. So we're starting with, uh, that's the water in is either hot or cold, I'll explain that. Uh, keg one, keg two, there's our sanitizer in, our caustic in, and our CO2 in. So let's start at the beginning. The water in right now is going to uh, my mash ton fill line. It's just the easiest spot to take it in. So that goes to that mess there through a valve, valve, and then into our on-demand hot water heaters. If you're starting a brewery, get hot water, on-demand hot water heaters. They are the greatest thing in the world. Okay, so we got our water set to... 185 degrees. Uh, you kind of want it as hot as you can get it for um, what we're doing in the brew house as far as keeping the sanitizer hot, or sorry, the sanitizer cold, the uh, uh, caustic solution hot, rinsing hot, and when I'm um, using this for sparging and filling, I can get the water up to 185 degrees right at my brew house, which is critical. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Water, hot water comes in, goes through the line, goes to the manifold. So the first step we do is to hook the kegs up, blow them out with CO2 to get most of the crap out, switch over to hot water, and then we're gonna open, pretty much for the whole process, our K1 and K2 valves are open because obviously everything is talking to the kegs. And then based on whether we're sanitizing or caustic, one of those two valves will be open as well. This will make more sense when I get to uh, using the thing. Okay, so keg one and keg two go to these hoses um, that go to these uh, Sankey uh, fittings. Uh, one end is going into the top, which goes to the straw inside of the keg. Other end goes to the gas line. We do not use these as they're originally designed to be used for um, dispensing beer out of a keg. We have to modify them, which I'll explain, to uh, do the cleaning process. So then this line um, comes off and goes into a valve here. Obviously there's two of them for each, for K1 and K2. It'll be more clear what these do as well. But basically anything that goes into or comes out of the K is gonna go through these two valves hooked up to the gas line, no matter what. Okay, so we'll show that in a little more detail. The next two uh, lines are the sanitizing caustic, and those go um, over here to the discharge side of the pump. 
And here's our uh, variable frequency pump, and basically what that means is that by turning this little knob, I can control the uh, speed and flow at which the pump is um, supplying the manifold, whatever I'm pumping to. So the discharge side of the pump is this section up above, and the, the discharge section, I said that. So then the suction side is through what's called the eye of the pump. So in centrifugal pumps like this, the inlet is always in the middle. Okay, so then I've set up this manifold to make this way, way easier to do. Um, so as you can see on the discharge side, depending on how my valves are arranged and what I'm trying to do, whether I'm trying to sanitize or do caustic, I'll uh, open the corresponding suction from my sanitize uh, keg full of solution, or I'll be sucking through my caustic line going to my caustic tank and my sanitized tank. I got a hot hose on my caustic because it's really hot and I've got a, a cold hose or just a general purpose hose on my sanitized tank because the temperature in that one needs to be cold. So I got a hot and a cold and we'll explain how we deal with uh, the heat and stuff. So then if I'm doing a caustic cycle, I suck through the bottom valve, which is currently closed. So assume all four of these valves are closed. So I'll open this one, suction, I'll open that discharge, which will go, like we said, to our caustic line, which is now going to be supplying the manifold. Um, when I'm done with my caustic cycle, I'll switch those valves over into the arrangement they're in now, and I will be uh, doing a sanitized cycle and shutting off the caustic cycle. Um, so then the caustic line will be closed and the sanitized line will be closed. And in between steps, we're gonna be uh, blowing out whatever liquid is left with the CO2 line, and then we're also gonna be uh, pressurizing the kegs up to about 13 or 14 PSI. Um, and we'll show all this in a second. I just wanted to give you a brief overview before we got started. So, so a little bit on the construction of my keg washer deal. Um, I was, eight, we actually started doing this with uh, my manifold here being screwed into a piece of plywood basically so this stainless steel used to be uh, plywood it sucked so and it didn't have wheels so we had to carry it around I, I uh, frequent my local scrapyard and I was able to get this piece of stainless for about 30 bucks it was formerly uh, in a restaurant or something uh, as a countertop uh, surface prep so I, uh, I took this piece of plate and I cut out, as you can see, the cutouts for the kegs to uh, slide in there upside down. Uh, the other kind of critical thing is that when they're, when they're under there um, and these are tapped and the kegs under there, you need a clearance under here so that those handles don't hit, but um, I'll, I won't close it, but basically use your imagination. So if this thing's too thick, those handles will hit and it doesn't really work right, so. Okay, so then um, I also incorporated, for the rest of our brew day, I put this uh, sink in here, ignore my welds, it was a really light material, it's not my fault. It's my fault. And I, I bent a couple of pieces of rod um, and welded it onto the back so I got all my uh, tri-clamp gaskets and tri-clamp fittings of which I am out of, but they slide onto this thing. And then when I'm brewing, I uh, fill this up with sanitizer during the day. And I got a little valve on here when we're done and you can obviously just drain the sanitizer off but during you know all the clean part of the process after the wart's been uh, 
cooled through the chiller and it's going into the fermenter, that part all has to be really, really clean. So I just leave all my fittings in there during that process. I put a shelf on the bottom here um, during our brew process, uh, during our cleaning process. These two kegs will live under here so everything's totally self-contained. Um, and then I just bought some, um, well, I found another piece of the scrap yard for the bottom, that was awesome. And then I, the only thing I really had to buy um, was, besides the scrap yard stuff, was this angle iron, which I used to build the frame, and then I put uh, casters on it. So that is how I did it. You don't have to weld any of this stuff. You could uh, pretty much bolt it all together. But that's our keg washer.